In this video, I will be reviewing different ways a user can generate hex meshes for simulations in Altair SimLab 2024. It should be noted that SimLab does enable users to split geometries into smaller bodies, which is a classical approach to aid in hex meshing. However, in this video, I will not be going through any geometry manipulation, but rather I'll be showing all the default hex meshing options. The first way a user can generate a hex mesh in SimLab is through the automatic hex mesh tool. SimLab's hex mesh tools can be found under the hex mesh menu. First, we can check if our body can be hex meshed by clicking on the identify icon. In our case, we can see that this assembly can be a hex meshed in its current state. The easiest and first way users should try to create a hex mesh in SimLab is the automatic tool. Users can specify the average element and minimum element size of the hex mesh, and also specify if there will be any additional elements around a circle or slot. After a mesh is generated, local remeshes can be done to make faces more dense by clicking on the remesh tool and selecting the face. Let's move on to the first non-automatic hex mesh option, the auto extrude option. The auto extrude option works by creating elements on a face and then extruding them through thickness to create hex elements. We can set a minimum and average element size, but we can also control if the elements are all hex or hex and wedge for difficult shapes. Additionally, multiple extrude directions can be applied, which aids in generating hex meshes for complex geometries. Our next meshing option is the Cartesian hex mesh. Our Cartesian mesh becomes very useful as it works for geometries which fail for a traditional hex mesh through generating a voxel mesh. SimLab will tell users if a hex mesh fails, and if users don't want to change geometry, a Cartesian mesh can be a good approach. Cartesian meshes utilize a voxel-based approach, and users can specify a uniform voxel size in every direction or they can specify a voxel size that changes due to axis or plane. It is important to note that this is a voxel-based hex approach. Some parts of the mesh may not match the geometry identically. But with this approach, users don't have to change to a tet mesh for a traditionally difficult shape like hex meshing. The next meshing approach is the 2.5D hex mesh. With the 2.5D mesh, I have further controls than other hex meshing options. I can specify element type, aspect ratio, and number of layers. I will specify four layers and generate the hex mesh. The really cool thing about the 2.5D hex mesh is if hex meshes are having problems extruding, we can manually specify the end faces. This is more powerful than the auto extrude or automatic hex options as users can directly control how to extrude a hex mesh, which is not an option in those other hex meshing tools. The axisymmetric option enables hex meshing to be done efficiently for cylindrical shapes. The axisymmetric options provide a mesh size, hex mesh element type, but also a number of circumferential elements. The other thing users can specify is if they don't want element creation to be created as a spider around an axis. Sometimes spider elements should be avoided depending on specific load applications. A screw mesh is very similar to an axis symmetric mesh as the hex meshing is done around the axis. Like the axis symmetric option, users can specify element size, circumferential element density, and spider element creation. However, with a screw mesh, Users can control the element density around the screw head and screw threads based on minor or major diameters. The screw meshing tool is particularly useful because SimLab has a built-in geometry creation tool for screws, specifically if users don't want to apply an RBE or bolt connector. The final mesh option is the pipe mesh option. I will apply a pipe hex mesh to this geometry which has a unique swept direction. Users can key in hex mesh element type as well as average element size and minimum element size for a pipe mesh. 
The pipe mesh also has options for curvature options and varying cross sections. With the cross section option, if at any point the cross section changes in the pipe, it will automatically adjust the aspect ratio and element size accordingly. The curvature option allows users to control the element size based on the overall curvature of the pipe. As I've stepped through all the various hex meshing options, hopefully this has shown you how easy it is to generate complex shapes in Altair SimLab. To learn more about Altair SimLab or other Altair products, go to www.trueinsight.io.